Thanks for all the support. Please like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Thank you so much. Here we go. Is it breathing deep? Exhale. Let it go. Let it go. Here we go. Beautiful. Deep breath in. Chin down. Exhale. Let it go. Let it go. I got you. Uh huh. There we go. Good. That's a little tight up there. Right. Let's go face up for me. Yeah, we got work to do. Yeah, there we go. Oh, wow. Yeah. Good. There you go. Nice. Doesn't it make sense to do it the way you do it? To. Once you adjust the spine to clear the body out so that things can flow back normally. Because if all the chiropractors just crack and you keep going for cracks and the body is still blocked up inside, what sense does it make in the long run? Preach it, preach it. <laughs>
is generally because another part of your back is not working properly. Gotcha. So what I do, it's a little backwards from, and sometimes people go, well, Doc, you're not doing what other chiropractors did to me. And I go, well, did, that, did the other chiropractors work? And they go, well, maybe a little bit, or it didn't work. Much. I'm not going to repeat the same things that other people are doing. Mm -hmm. What I found to work is working around this area. So you have the wires going down your leg, you probably have some rib injuries, also some, probably some muscular injuries in here. Yeah, right. So the, there's a muscle called the serratus uh, muscles that are on the side here. Mm -hmm. Very likely you probably tore them. And we're going to go through there with the gua sha. We'll sort of inspect that area a little mm -hmm. bit and see if it's muscular. It could also be the nerves. So the nerve actually goes around the rib from the back around mm -hmm. to the front. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes sensation going like this when you, when you motion like that, mm -hmm. it's very suspicious for maybe the nerve could it could be the muscle could be there's really no joint over here mm -hmm. you're saying the only joint is where the costal cartilage attaches on the front here mm -hmm. and then you have the rib head that attaches to the back here so right. I'm gonna check out if it's the rib joint I'll know when I adjust you if I you know if this area is real real tender back here it's mm -hmm. probably the rib head that's inflaming the nerve that goes around the spine. Right, because it feels like it's rolling around when I roll on the side. Yeah, it's, yeah, it sounds a little nervy to me. Uh, I'm going to say it could be the muscle, and we'll, we'll go off shot and, I, and it'll, we'll see if it's the muscle. Right. But um, a lot of um, crunching and cracking going on here, too. In your lower neck there? Yeah, yeah. Right, so and, just, just, just the same kind of mirrors the same story how this area gets overworked, the lower neck typically gets overburdened. And so what you're, what you're seeing is that this area is moving too much and that's why you're feeling it crunch and crack around you're not supposed to be using this area as your main engine your main motor of your end of your neck is your upper neck the neck is designed to work from the top first and the lower last so how I address hypermobility down here is by getting the original engine running at the top mm -hmm. and so when I inspect your neck I if this area is really fluid and dy dynamic and motioning I'm gonna be confused I expect this to be probably pretty stiff mm -hmm. and because this area gets stiff your lower neck mm -hmm. is going to be clicking and crunching around right. and you're going to be and I feel like it's grinding or there's something like, moving. Like grinding feel, and even like back here is a lot of like I don't know if you heard that like right right there in the middle back yeah just like crunching right, yeah. so it didn't do right now when you're when you're when you're doing that motion you're popping the rib head out there's a rib joint you're there's a ligament that attaches to the side of the rib and when you're going like this, mm -hmm. you're pulling that rib forward. Now that ligament is a rubber band that's supposed to stabilize and hold that rib attached. And you probably can click that, especially if you've had a trauma. Mm -hmm. So the trauma, generally either you break a bone or if you don't break a bone, so if you, when that fall happened, if you didn't break a bone, it's very likely that you at least tore the ligaments. Does that make sense? That mm -hmm. hold the rib to the side of the vertebrae almost undoubtedly. To me... Even though that was since October for last year, like now I'm really feeling the pain. Right, right. But, well, it doesn't... The, could have healed incorrectly. It heals out of position. They, it's almost like a cut on your skin. If you have a cut on your skin and then you gape it and it heals open, now the ligament's actually longer than it's supposed to be and it doesn't have the same, like a rubber band, it doesn't have the elasticity mm -hmm. to hold it together. And so it's almost like it's flopping around a little bit. The, the, the rib's not seating properly on the side of the vertebrae. So we have to drive blood in there a little bit and try to compress it. Go ahead and stand up for me. I'm going to look at your posture here a little bit. Yeah, look straight forward, but turn to your side. Turn, turn up, but look straight this way. There you go. So you're good. Just relax your arms. Relax your arms. There you go. So your head's about an inch forward mm -hmm. from your shoulders, but the, the main thing is not too bad, but we want, you want to get this. this. This is a little bit too popped out in no, here. That's, that's, that area feels inflamed. We want to get that in. Mm -hmm. You know, your back should be... It should be in, right. and it sort of. This is sort of how it feels a little bit. Like mm -hmm. your body wants it to be here, mm -hmm. and I want it to be here, gotcha. right? And in order to do that, we have to take you to an even farther back position. But in order to do that, we have to first loosen up your spine a little bit, mm -hmm. get it a little bit more flexible, so that we can. And we'll do that at the end. We'll put you on some stretches. Mm -hmm. Let me have you on your back here for me. Okay. Exhale. I got you, brother. Here we go. Is it breathing deep? Exhale. Let it go. Let it go. Here we go. Beautiful. Deep breath in. Chin down. Exhale. Let it go. Let it go. I got you. Uh-huh. There we go. Good. That's a little tight up there. All right. Good. Other side for me. Let's go face up for me. Everything's out to the right here, brother. Everything. Wow. 
Yeah, that's where all the wow. punching and cracking is working. Yeah, your head's tilted to the left, so the right side is more expanded open. Mm -hmm. So you're in what we call right avoidance. Your head is tilted to the left to try to get away from an injury on the right side of your neck. Mm -hmm. And what's happening is that expands the joints, so the joints are more open, mm -hmm. and that's what allows more air bubbles to be in the joints, and that's what you're feeling is clicking and popping. Right. Now, even in the right ear, there's always um, right pressure. Side. and Correct. If all, right. It feels like it's getting wet. I think right. like, the, like the drainage is right. not right. happening. Right. Very good. You got the drainage, mm -hmm. So the drainage down your neck, mm -hmm. so because your head's tilted left, the muscles on the right side are really tight because they're being stretched, right. so the muscles are getting real tight, and that clogs the, or crimps the drainage lines down the right side of your neck. Right. I have to tilt you probably right about there. Right about there, the bones are level on your neck, <laughs> but I have you about 15, 20 degrees tilted to the right. If your head's straight with your torso, the bones are all sticking out on the right. Yeah, I can feel it. it. I can feel it. Now the compensatory pain would be left lower neck and left shoulder pain. Mm -hmm. So if you stay in this alignment for 10 years, mm -hmm. eventually you'd have symptoms on the left because you're more in the what we call the acute phase mm -hmm. and we don't want the what we call the compensatory pain. We want to stay we want to fix this so we don't arrive yep. with that second variant. That right, essentially because some of the pains I was having on the right side I start feeling on the left side right. in the same places. Right. You're gonna, the left side's gonna start being overburdened because you're offloading the pressure from the injured right, right side, mm -hmm. and your left side's gonna compensate. So and, we're gonna. And the next thing, the moment I felt the injury, my body temperature start right. going up and down, right. and then my um, hands and feet will go cold and hot. Right. So, you know, it's a lot of. All right, I'm gonna go real gentle. We're gonna loosen this guy a little bit. I got you real easy. Here we go. I got you. Yeah, it's real tight up here. Wow. Yeah, we got work to do. Yeah, there we go. I got you. There we go. There we go. Let this side go. Yeah. Let me have it. I got you. Wow. Yeah. All right. I got you, brother. You okay? Yeah. All right. Good. So it's. I start off whenever I adjust anybody. Mm -hmm. I start with a. What do you say? A low threshold. You understand? I, I start with a, a. Less forceful adjustment, and then if it doesn't move, okay. <laughs> let me let me put a little more pressure on the clutch pedal. Right. You know, I start with a low amount of pressure on the clutch pedal, and then. If nothing moves, I start ramping up. It, the first adjustment should have all, it should have moved. You understand? And mm. that's how it shows me how tight it is. Um, the, the first time you try to do it, just correct? Right. And then I did it again, and I upped the pressure a little bit. Mm. So, what does that mean, Ed? Well, it should be very. What I, what I said earlier was that this area is supposed to be very loose. Your skull, atlas, atlas axis should be the loosest joint in your spine, and so this should be just very dynamic, very fluidic, very just butter and if this area is rigid then the lower neck overworks when the lower neck overworks your head goes forward mm -hmm. so we want to retract the head back we want to get the head back over your shoulders there we go. oh it's all like gunk up here and this is your this is your ears yeah this ear has been you know I, I feel like it's leaking yes drainage um, yeah it, it's you know at one point I, I i started beginning to think i had some sort of disease right but you know the, the brain can just create unnecessary stress right so, right. so let me just try this chiropractic thing and see what happens. Good, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, and, and the reason I realized it's working is, is the breathing. I had difficulty breathing, and that automatically went away. Yes. And I said, hey, th this seems good. Yeah, a very simple test mm -hmm. for that is just pushing your head forward. If you push your head forward, it's very difficult to take a deep breath in. If you right. pull your head back, it's very easy to breathe. And, and a common reason why the head goes forward is that the nerves holes get larger when you push your head forward. This is why people develop that dowager hump or the, mm -hmm. you know, the, the rounded upper back appearance happens as a compensation, as a way to relieve nerve pressure, but then, oh, I can't breathe, and oh, my heart has to work harder, and yeah, but yeah it's, all, it's all sort of clogged up up here. Does it look any a mark. There's a, this is the yeah. combing. This is the gua sha, and they, mm -hmm. they figured out that this is a, sort of the best way to help bring nutrients in and take the waste out it speeds up the replacement rate because actually where you're pressing like where the pain yes. is it feels like it's going it's inside deeper. Yeah, yes, it deep feels right here. really yes. deep yeah i can feel it almost close to my throat yes yeah, yeah. it's in there that's all inflammation well the it's it's guarding part of it's an injury so mm -hmm. when when not when when you hit here you probably whiplashed your neck on the right also do you understand yeah it was when such you, a bad fall yeah. when you collided here mm -hmm. the neck got injured too now 
I understand this was the main symptom, but there was... Uh, under here, like the armpit I understand, yeah. but, mm -hmm. but your neck whiplashed probably to the right. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? And then these injured joints mm -hmm. get swollen, and then over the past six, nine, ten months, or whatever, mm -hmm. now your neck has been tilting away from them, mm -hmm. trying to find relief, and that's made these muscles overexert themselves. Right. Because of the alignment shifting, these muscles are working much harder than they're supposed to be. So the stability goes down. As the joints separate, the muscles have to work harder. So as you tilt your head to the left, the muscles on the right side have to work harder mm -hmm. to compensate, to stabilize, to keep it balanced, to keep it all together. Right. right. Yep, you got it. And and from the fall, the same leg I sprained when I was 17, that pain shot right up my whole right side. Right. Because I, I landed on this leg, and that just increased the pain over the months. Mm. I'm not doubting that there's soft tissue injury, and mm -hmm. I'm not doubting that you probably could have cracked the vertebra, cracked the rib a little bit, but I'm not feeling anything dislocated. Mm -hmm. I do feel some, I don't even really feel much uh, crunchiness in here. It's almost, this is where I'm going to, I'm leaning to what I was saying earlier about mm -hmm. it being neurological. You know, I, want to, I wanted to feel the tissue, but like right there, you got a little bit of a, there's really not much here on the front side, but then right there, see if you can see that, that's, I'll let you know. There's, there's definitely, right where he contacted, you feel that right there? Mm -hmm, I can feel there's, it. There's a, that's like where the bomb went off. <laughs> that's where the, that's uh, ground zero. That's where the hit, you know, that's where the that's hit, where the hit happened. So I'm not, I'm not doubting that there's a internal tissue damage in here. And so the body, the body acts as if you're gonna do it again. Do you mm -hmm. understand? Your body stiffens this up, expecting you to fall on this again. Does that make sense? Right. And so part of the conversation you have to sort of convince the body of is that I'm not going to fall again. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to land on something really hard and but your body doesn't trust you. <laughs> it thinks yeah. that you're going to do the same thing again and so it puts down all this sort of fortification and stiffness mm -hmm. in anticipation of another trauma. But I mean doesn't it make sense to do it the way you do it? To once you adjust the spine to clear the body out so things can flow back normally. Because if all the chiropractors just crack and you keep going for cracks and the body is still blocked up inside, what sense does it make in the long run? Preach it. Preach it. You know? <laughs> it, sounds, it, 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 it makes sense, sense to me. I, I don't know why I feel like I'm the only one, but you're yeah. exactly right. Because all your channels have to be clear. I mean, they're just wasting their time. And if they're, it, one of the main things of chiropractors is your body's symptoms are your cure and they work with that and they're just ignoring the problems. It doesn't make sense to mm. me. He's smiling. I'm smiling right now. Right. Mm. <laughs> Preach it, brother. It makes no sense. In there. <laughs> Sounds good. You, you haven't, you, I think you, I don't. You're going to keep going in there for the same thing, and you're, 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 you're defeating the whole purpose of holistic medicine. I don't have to talk. I, I, you got it. I, that's part of what I, <laughs> <laughs> my, my message to America is that we, if our spinal column is clean, yeah. that, well, first of all, people don't understand that your spinal health is your health. That is the first thing that needs to be mm -hmm. understood, that you know, we, we take blood pressure, for instance, or we do a comprehensive metabolic panel, and, you're, and we look in your blood for your thyroid and your liver, and, mm -hmm. and we're trying to determine, like, like life insurance, for instance, right? They take a blood test, and they do, you know, heart blood pulse rate, right, blood pressure, and that's how they're going to determine how healthy you are for, you know, do you smoke, get the idea, all these questions. Yeah. But they don't say, take your shirt off, let me, let me rub your back, right? Exactly. <laughs> they don't assess, let me look at your posture. They don't assess are all 24 vertebrae moving? They don't analyze what I analyze, and mm -hmm. what they value, you know, isn't particularly what I value the most. What I, and what I value, they don't value at all. So all of the organs are unintelligent. Very good, yeah. So mm -hmm. the organs are listening to the brain. So it the, needs the spine to be. The, the spine is the conduit that the brain uses to communicate mm -hmm. with the organs. The organs by themselves are unintelligent, so you have to have that conduit open you have to have the brain able to communicate mm -hmm. intelligently with the body. When a person has high blood pressure and a, you know, tachycardia, they zoom in on the heart. Mm -hmm. I zoom in on the communication line between the brain and the heart. Right, because it's, it's not telling it to do what it has to right. do. Right, very good, very good. Oh, man. And that's right here. This is the left side. So the mm -hmm. cardiopulmonary nerve comes out of your left side of your upper back. Mm -hmm. This is where the nerves that go to your heart. And so if this area is sore, typically because people's heads are forward. Mm -hmm. So you have injuries, you have traumas, then your head goes forward, this area gets inflamed, and then you have tachycardia, and, and the medical world doesn't, person comes into the hospital with high blood pressure and tachycardia, they're not gonna 
try to go in here and try to get oh, the oh. soreness out of your back. It's a prescription. Maybe a prescription. It's got to fit into a pill bottle. All right. And, uh, yeah, right there. Wow, it's these ribs are yeah, I can feel it blown out right there. We'll clean it up. Yeah, that's such a right there. Yeah, it's this not good. I gotta clean. All these ribs are all popped out right here on the side. So the popping out comes from the um, right when you when you do that maneuver where you're pushing your arm forward. You're mm -hmm. these ligaments aren't holding everything in place like they should. Mm -hmm. And now the nerve is right next to that rib head. And, and the the reason I began doing that motion was um. Watching YouTube for, um, I was using a re resistant band to build my back muscles. Right. And I guess I just did it a little too much. Good right. posture is maintained by, that's where you want to be, not by forcing it through muscle contraction. I, I, mm -hmm. I, I say good luck with that. I say good luck having your muscles be the, be the thing that allow you to be in the right alignment. Um, the bones, the structure. Right, right. The, the, you have to stretch the front part that's never been stretched. Mm -hmm. You know, we haven't ever taken time to arch back and we have to make the structures on the back like each other a little bit more so mm -hmm. we can even attempt it. All right, very good. And even as you press that, I can feel the, the little numbness in my right leg. Yes, mm -hmm. right. It's, that's what I'm saying. It's neurological. You're, you got neurological. It's coming from in here. Right there. When you press that air, it feels like I just have to hold my breath. You do. Yeah, it's a diaphragm. Your diaphragm attaches in here, so try to breathe through it a little bit. Try to mm -hmm. take deep breaths in and exhale, and then. I mean, it's not normal to feel that pressure, right? There shouldn't be anything. You, you should be able nothing. to push as hard as I want, and add. I feel pressure from your elbow. Mm -hmm. There's no pain. Mm -hmm. So all this is due to. One. Well, not, not the one thing, but that. Our alignment, your alignment probably wasn't correct before you had the trauma. Mm. So when you had the trauma, mm. the force went into certain areas, right? Mm -hmm. If your whole spine was, mo was moving before you had an injury, your whole spine would absorb the force, right? So whoever was moving before you fell, mm -hmm. that's the ones that were received all the force. And then as a result of that, they're the ones that wanted to be avoided. So your body started shifting things around, mm -hmm. and now your lower back's hurting, and you know the things are shooting down your legs, got numbness down my leg. Yeah, I'm thinking to myself, you know, I'm, I'm 39, I shouldn't right. be feeling like Correct. this already. You shouldn't, no. Nope. It makes no sense. We gotta get this area unlocked up here. It's the same story as your neck. The middle back should move before your lower back. Mm -hmm. So this area being locked yeah. down right there. Yeah. That's what's gotta be unlocked. <laughs> Yep. Yep. They're all locked up. Let me see this arm. Let me see this. Put this behind your back. Yep. Oh, good. Yeah, wow. Right there. Wow. Yep. Oof. Should I, like, resist or not really try you to relax? You try to, you try to sink in the table as best you can. Uh -huh. okay. I know that's just going to be tough. Mm -hmm. Put your arm back down. Let's go to the other arm. Yep. Right there. So your homework is what we call Epsom salt. Mm -hmm. You got to get the Epsom salts in here to help draw out the lactic acid mm -hmm. by osmosis. So you put a salt, co high concentration of salt on the outside of your body mm -hmm. and it causes water to leave your body. Yeah, there's a real big mark real quick that came out in there. Yeah, that part has been numb for years actually. Yeah, we gotta, it's, all these ribs over here have gotta get cleaned up. And the thing is I never had a professional massage done in my entire life. Right. It's so like a dental, it's like a it's completely like ignoring my body, right. you know? Right. These are the rib heads. So the mm -hmm. you have the the joints that connect the vertebrae are right next to the spinous. They're right in here. And then about an inch over, you have the ribs that are attaching to the side of the vertebrae, kinda right in here. And so that rib head line is all 
inflamed, mm -hmm. and the nerve runs right along that rib head. So having bruising alongside of your spine mm -hmm. makes it so that when you move, mm -hmm. you irritate that nerve and that you're feeling something move around and then it burns or you know, you're feeling odd sensations and right. even like that area that is, is itchy constantly. Yes. So right. that's, uh, that's, right. um, that's a sign. Of itching is toxins and that's the mm -hmm. internal bruising. It's exactly what so I'm talking about. So there's itching I feel here Correct. also sometimes. Correct. And it, it never goes away and I'm always like, what, what is this? Correct. I put alcohol in it think it's going to help. Nope. It's it internal. Nothing. It's internal. Right. It's internal toxins that have been trapped in there. Mm -hmm. So now, you know, they have herbs you take to remove toxins. So if these things are right. in there, could those herbs remove them or do you have to... Well, the issue is there's no circulation. Mm -hmm. So you can't... Any, any, anything nutritionally can only work on the areas that get blood flow. If an area is so stiff, mm -hmm. it's, like, it's like Mount Everest. The now herbs will never get there. Correct, you can't get in there. Now, mm -hmm. the herbs can be great and used in conjunction with soft tissue work. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because now the... It's like having a, a lubricant. They, they always, the glucosamine and chondroitin are two popular ones here in America. Mm -hmm. But I go, they can't work for the knee because the knee doesn't have any circulation. They can't work for the rib head joints because many times they're so bound up, mm -hmm. they're not getting any circulation. So their studies need to be redone with taking these things mm -hmm. and somebody then driving them. Yeah, that part feels like it's moving around. Yeah, it's like penetrating oil. You have to like push it into these... Like Mount Everest is not a high traffic zone, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Yeah. It's not a, and it's all like all this is just really inflamed over here, and, and you had that trauma, and then your body has healed. Mm -hmm. Like it basically, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you just about fractured it or you know busted it. You understand? Mm -hmm. And it probably didn't displace, mm -hmm. but it healed. You know, stiff. Well, ever since that fall at 17, I've never been the same in a way, and I thought, you know, this was normal to right. heal back this way. Like, there's a lot. This is a very large area of, mm -hmm. of internal sort of toxins and bruising, and so, you know, I... Because that's what I'm you, thinking. If, if At the very least, you sprained it, mm -hmm. and more likely you, you might have mildly fractured it. Now, these toxins you're releasing inside the body... They go into your blood, and then you hopefully your kidney grabs them and you pee them out. Or you can take them right through the skin mm -hmm. by the salt bath. Right. Clean this all out. This side's about a third. Mm -hmm. The major thing is, and once we get this area moving properly, mm -hmm. you know, it won't need to be... And once it's clean, it'll be self-circulating. Part of what's happened is it's so bound up that it's not getting good internal circulation. Mm -hmm. So as it, as it, we were saying moves properly, it'll start cleaning itself internally. Oh my god, is that really what's that? Can you see that? Yeah. It's yeah. The left side there is all... Well, I couldn't even turn my neck on the Look at that side, that's the side that's worse. Oh yeah. my god. That's where the ribs, the nerves are going right that's through that. That's all toxins in there? Yep. Yep. Oh, smoke, let me see that. Yeah, this is where all my pain is too. Right. Actually, let's, let's work on that side a little bit. So. And I always have trouble sleeping on my right side. I know I'm not supposed to sleep on the right side, but some nights I just want to sleep on the right side, but I can't because it, it gets so uncomfortable. Yeah, gotta get all this it's like black in here. Make sure you drink a lot of water when you leave here. I want some extra water and take mm -hmm. up the stops to the bathroom because mm -hmm. your kidney's gonna be on overdrive. <laughs> all right, I got you, brother. There we go. You okay, breathe. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna stretch. Yep. Good, we got it. Yeah, we got it. Breathe in. Exhale. Go. Exhale. Yep, you got it. Go, go easy. We'll go easy. Good. There we go. Exhale. Breathe in. Exhale. Good. There you go. Nice. All right. Very good. Right here. Yes. That's where we're gonna stretch. That's where we're gonna try to target with mm -hmm. the stretching. Yeah, very good. It's actually moving a little better. Yeah, you're doing great. Yeah, it's just it's just time stretching that, getting that, getting 20 minutes on that. Very good. <laughs> 